Okay, I'm underneath a, an RV. This has the 8.1 Vortec engine in it. And the symptom was the RV was getting hot, overheating. And we found it to be the clutch, the, the clutch on the fan. And just for comparison's sake, I'm going to do a before and after. So this is the old clutch. You can see how easy it turns. And if you get a hold of yours and you can spin it that easy, then your clutch is shot. Under a, a good clutch, normally if you spin it really hard, it may only go from like, say, 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock position and then stop. But if your fan blade, let's, we're like 70 degree day here or night, actually it's dark, and it turns this, this freely, then you know it's shot. It should not turn that easy at all. Because the, but anyway, we'll put the new one on there and then we'll show you what a new one will look like and you'll have something to compare to. Oh, I almost forgot. This was pretty tight. Sometimes you can get lucky and just use the fan belt that cr may create enough friction where you can cut it lo get it loose. It takes a uh, 30, let me see how many millimeters is that? 36 millimeters or like inch and 7 sixteenths wrench to get on that large nut. Let me see if I can get my camera up here. Let me see. Yeah, there it is. That large nut there. That's what you got to unscrew to get this off and the clutch and the fan blade will come off together because the problem with that is you try to get a hold of it the belt is usually not enough friction to hold the smooth pulley so your here's your water pump pulley right there and there's hardly nothing to get a hold of it one thing that works out good if you got an auto zone nearby you can go buy this tool kit i think it's like 20 something dollars and then you know as long as you don't damage it you can just take it right back to them and they'll give you a full refund um, but there's the part number 27018 and you get the 36 millimeter and a 57 millimeter wrench that looks like that. And you can see there's a bigger one here. It's still mounted. To so give you an idea of what it did, the four, let me get turned around here, the four water pump bolts, or the four bolts that holds the water pump pulley on, are still up there. They're, I, had to, I took them out, I backed them out about a quarter inch in order to get the wrench slid over the threads and then snugged them back up. So that way the wrench will hold itself in place. Still it didn't want to come loose very well, so to get, keep it stationary, I then put a chain on it and then ran the chain up and over the frame, the frame rail, dropped it down, put another little hook on it. So it, it wasn't going anywhere at all. And so that way, after I did that, I was able to get plenty of leverage with this other wrench. I was able to stick it up in here and really lay down on, lay the torque onto it and break the nut break the nut free. So hopefully this additional information may help you out even though I'm trying to explain this upside down. Okay here's a better shot. I got the fan blade and clutch out of the way now. And you can see how I put it on the I got the wrench on there. Just snugged it up, that held it nice and still. I was able to break it free after doing that. That should make it more, explain it better. Okay, it's a couple days later and I got the new part in. I was wanting to show you the difference of this. Um, okay, here's a new one. See how hard that is to turn? It takes a pretty good effort to rotate that. Now, check out the old one. I mean, it'll just freewheel. So well, that's how you know you got a bad clutch, at least in this, uh, this this particular situation. I guess sometimes they could lock up and turn all the time and make all kinds of racket and rob you of horsepower. But also I was noticing you can see all the oil residue. So it probably means that the, the I think they call it the viscous fluid that's normally in there to how it operates has leaked out at some point in time. And that's why we're freewheeling like we are. And let me show you on this side. Okay, there's the old one, here's the new one. Now, of course, what, what we ordered here is this part number, right there, the double, I mean the W000-7657, and that includes the fan and the fan clutch. Now, the fan clutch by itself is right there, the W000-0193, uh, and I, everything I've cross-referenced, this is a workhorse part only. Uh, I read on forums where people may have tried to uh, to use uh, off of a truck, a conventional truck or something, and they may not work as well. We may have larger fan or different cooling situation, something unique to an RV. 
because this came off a 2006, um, what is this thing? Sun Cruiser Winnebago, 2006. It's got the workhorse chassis, W24, um, with the 8.1 Vortec engine. And if, if you, you may not know this, but the way these operate, you can see this spring here. Well, as you're driving down the road, it's always monitoring your temperature. So once you start getting over 200 degrees or so, this spring will rotate this shaft. When it rotates that shaft, the fluid will flow out of this little chamber into this larger disc area. And there's, there's like, almost like a torque converter in an automatic transmission of a car. Once that fluid gets in there, it'll start creating more and more friction. So the fan starts spinning faster and faster. Once the temperatures drop, and it, it's satisfied, then the fluid goes back into this chamber or the valve rotates and then the fan again starts, starts slowing back down, saving you horsepower. Uh, so that's the best of my knowledge how it works. So we're going to get this installed and, and get the cooling problem took care of. Oh, and his symptoms on the cooling the, the situation was uh, as he's going down the road, if he went over 55 miles an hour for any length of time, the temperature would start keep getting hotter and hotter. He, as long as he kept his speed like 55 or lower, he could uh, you know, keep the temperatures within a, a, a good range. And this was during January or so, so uh, there's no telling what would have happened you know, if it was hotter weather. But uh, we're going to get this changed out and get it cooled down. Okay, we've got the new fan installed. And you can see those little bolts right there that, that bolt on the um, water pump pulley. They can be brokers to get a hold of. And so we've got this little wrench. This is be a very good investment. It's a little 10 millimeter ratchet wrench. It can really speed up the process. Otherwise, you'll, you'll spend 20 minutes getting those little screws out. But it's going on real easy. And, and of course, always put on a new belt. And we'll see how it does. Okay, new belt is installed. Now I want to show you this tip and something good to because everybody usually should carry a, a 3H ratchet you know in the RV with them but a little cheater pipe is very handy actually this is a little pipe that I, I, I comes with a small hydraulic jack that I keep and it's just perfect for this because your ratchet sometimes you can't get much leverage on that large spring but you put this over that ratchet and you can easily pull that big spring down to loosen up the belt and then get the belt on there. So it goes on real easy if, if you do that. Oh, also be sure and draw you a schematic of how that belt goes. Because it can, if you don't know exactly how it goes on there, there's 20 different ways you could thread it. In fact, it's a good idea to draw you a schematic before you ever need to replace the belt. And just keep that in the RV somewhere so if you ever snap a belt going down the road, you know exactly how to thread it and put it back on. Okay, uh, one last thing I was wanting to show. I think earlier in the video, it's been a few days ago, I showed how easy the fan blade was to turn the old clutch. Now, a, a new one, this is how tight it is. It will not free will at all. This is a brand new one. Turn it as hard as you want. Now, mine, my, uh, I got the same engine in my RV. This is a buddy of mine's. Uh, with it, it being the original fan clutch from 2005, if I grab a hold of it, turn it as hard as I can, It'll go from 3 o'clock position to 6 o'clock position and then stop. So the most I can get out of mine is a quarter turn. But with his, I can't even get that. It just don't, you know. But that's the difference in a new clutch. And I, so I guess mine is showing a little wear. And it's a 70 degree day. That may, I don't know if that's going to have a, any effect or not. But it's not like it's a real cold day or anything. So, um, but if you are uh, having any cooling issues and you get under there and you get a hold of your, your 8.1 Vortec, get a hold of your fan blade, and it turns real freely, then you know what the problem is. Alright, we are got, got, got this all buttoned up, and I noticed something. Because it's very important, the cowling. Make sure you get this cowling nice and tight all around the radiator. And I uh, noticed something when I come to this side. This radiator was recently replaced. And I believe when they did that, oh, let me see if I get my hand in here. All right, you see, here's the cowling, here's the radiator. There's supposed to be a rubber strip between these two. So that's a large gap going all the way up and down. So instead of air being pulled through the radiator, it's going to be, the hot air is going to be bypassing through this gap. So we're going to have to get one order from Workhorse and, and get that put in. It just, just slips in place. 
There is one on the other side, so I would suspect when the, this radiator got changed last year, they just didn't stick it back in there. So that's something to uh, look look for. Make sure your your cowling's in, in in good shape and nice and tight, so that air is pulling through the radiator and not around the edges.